Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Listen in 3D, episode number 52. I'm your boy Justin, aka Too Tall for You Fool. And I'm Netta, aka Wondrous Net. And together we are both Team 3D, the host of Listen in 3D, where we discuss, dissect, and debate the music and albums in the world of hip-hop and other genres. Like what you're seeing, give this video a like, comment, share it around, and most of all that would help us uh, out the best. Subscribe if you do subscribe. Click on that notification bell. That way you get notifications when all our videos and shorts go live. Got plenty of content up on this channel, so there's plenty to watch. Um, we're dropping stuff almost every day. Not every single day, but almost every day with uh, our shorts and episodes uh, that we come out with weekly. And, uh, yeah, so, anyway, Netta, going into this album, were you familiar with this artist in any way, shape, or form, like... From any of his yeah. acting, or not just so much outside of music acting, or just any other, of the other stuff that he does. Yeah, I, I didn't know any of his music, but I've seen him um, in movies. Um, the one that sticks out to me is Carmen the Hip Opera. Oh yeah, Carmen um, the Hip Opera. I figured that was going to come up. <laughs> yeah, um, he, where he played like a corrupt cop, you know, was... Event, uh, initially trying to get with Beyonce's character, Car Carmen. I had a whole song about it. I'm trying to get with you, Shorty, but I'm not feeling you <laughs> yet. So it, it was it was a really good movie. So I remember him from that. Also remembered him from uh, Alicia Keys' You Don't Know My Name video where he oh, yeah. infamously ordered the fish and hot chocolate. Uh, so <laughs> that that's pretty much uh, what I knew about him going in. What about you? Are, are you a, a fan? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a casual fan. Not a, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan, but before we go any further, let's talk about, let, let, let's introduce uh, the album we're talking about and who the artist is. So today we'll be talking about Most Def's debut solo album, Black on Both Sides. It was released October 12th, 1999. It was certified gold. It peaked at number three on the R&B and hip hop album charts and number 25 on the Billboard 200. It has singles including Miss Fat Booty, Mathematics, and Umi Says. There are mu music videos for Miss Fat Booty and Umi Says, and there were guest appearances from Busta Rhymes, Talib Kweli, Q-Tip, and Vanilla Mojica. Sorry if I but butchered your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, most deaf. Um, he is now known as Yassine Bey. I think that's, yeah, that's how he's pronouncing now. I guess he changed his name or his stage name in... Uh, 2011, I want to say. Um, his real name, Dante Terrell Smith, but, you know, just professionally he's known as Yassine Bey these days. Um, he had a pretty unique uh, career. He launched a hip hop career back in 94 with uh, his siblings in a short lived group, Urban Therm Thermal Dynamics. Uh, did some appearances with the Bush Babies and De La Soul as well. Uh, then in 96, that's when he. Uh, collaborated with a uh, fellow Brooklyn-based rapper, Talib Kweli, who's on this album, formed a duo, Black Star, and their debut album, Most Def and uh, Talib Kweli, are Black Star, which came out the year before this one. Um, here, here it's a great album. It's probably an album we should do one of these days, but um, you know, it had singles like, such as Definition, Respiration. Uh, so, you know, he's definitely been around a, a very long time, and, you know, he's definitely ventured into acting and, you know, just other other things as well. Uh, I would have to say, uh, going back to Carmen, a hip-hop opera, that, I remember seeing that on MTV when that premiered. That was a, you know, very big deal. That also had other act actors and actresses on there, you know, well, really musicians. Beyonce, uh, The Brat was on there, Jermaine Dupri, I think Bow Wow had a scene in there too. It was... It, it was a, yeah, broad, yeah, yeah. It was a, <laughs> it was a star-studded cast uh, for for hip hop at the time. Let me say, uh, but one movie that really did point out to me. It's been a very long time since I had seen it. Uh, he did a movie with Jack Black back in two thousand eight. It was called uh, "Be Kind Rewind," where he works in like a VHS uh, rental store, and you know they're trying to shut it down, and then they have to get everything together to like try to keep the business open it was, it was a pretty funny movie a different different kind of movie and 
it was actually pretty cool of him to see him team up with Jack Black. Definitely, if you're a big movie buff, def- definitely check it out sometime. Uh, uh, probably not the best movie out there, but I, I thought it was pretty funny. You know? And, you know, with yeah. Jack, Jack Black being as big as he is, you know, I thought, you know, you know pretty cool. Uh, otherwise, really no, like, uh, nostalgic connection to him. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have any most F CDs growing up or anything like that. I heard the term a lot. A lot of people use the term, but <laughs> I think I heard it on an episode of Cousin Skeeter once. But, you know, most deaf, like, you know, <laughs> pretty unique name. <laughs> um, how about you? Do you have any connection to, uh, you know, most deaf aside from uh, uh, the Carmen the Hip Opera or anything like that? No, I really only knew him as an, I mean, I knew he was a rapper, but I mostly only consumed his, his uh, acting stuff. Hmm. All right, fair enough, fair enough. All right, so if we have nothing else to say about any connections to him, um, let's go into the album artwork, and it looks pretty advanced. It looks like it's something that could pass for today. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's him, and... I, I don't know. It's pretty dark. I don't know if you can see his braids or yeah. It looks like he does have his braids in this photo. Um, pretty nice digitized photo of him. Otherwise, not much going on. Uh, what 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 do you get out of it? Is is digitized? That's a fake photo. I don't know. I mean, it could be real. It could be. Oh. Fake. I, uh, oh, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty striking. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh my god, it's it's such a high definition. Uh, photo. It's a, uh, it's like stun. It's stunning. It's it's a it's a really nice picture. I think uh, the his face is it's largely emotionless except for the uh, his his brows are like he's doing a little bit of fur- furrowing of of the brows, indicating he has something to get off his chest. And <laughs> I think he does that on his on this album. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think he does do a pretty good job of that. Hold on just a second. There we go. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, I mean it's a pretty, pretty good uh, photo for the most part. And, you know, I don't, I think this is the first one we've seen. And it, it could pass for like a statue maybe. Like, like the face is all like big, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I know it's only an album cover, but I don't know. It's like, I look at it, I feel like, you know, it's a giant face. Kind of reminds me of that big face from, I don't know if you remember that old Nickelodeon show, Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> oh, Mac. Oh, Mac, yeah. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that, sort of. Like, like where he has his eyes yeah. closed and it's just like, Legends of the Hidden <laughs> Temple. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. You you can really see every, every feature, every distinct feature of, of his face in the photo. It's a really... It's really good. It's a really serious photo. It's it's really good, and I I can see a little old Mac in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a Legends of the Hidden Temple blast on this show. All right, <laughs> all right. Let's go into beats, and for the most part, I will say I was very well produced. Very very well produced album. I I feel it was kind of hard for me to choose, and I might be cheating here when I say my favorite beat was the last song, made through December or. May, December, I don't know, but yeah, that was my favorite, and it was an instrumental too, so, but, what can I say, it was just a nice, relaxing beat, what, 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 what favorite are you going with? Yeah, I liked May, December too, I found it, like, relaxing too, but I, I had to go with Miss Fat Booty, it Miss was Fat so Booty. good, yeah, yeah it, it was so good, I had to go listen to the original Aretha Franklin song, uh, yeah. 1965, One Step Ahead, it, um, I like how it starts off. It starts off with the sample, and she's just like, "I know I can't afford to stop." Uh, and then uh, while he's rapping, she's just like, mm, mm. And I, "I thought it was so good." You can just hear her throughout the whole song, even while he's rapping. I thought it was so good. Yeah, the sample is very well played. One step ahead by Aretha Franklin. If you guys are for the, you sample heads out there. And, and there, there are a few samples I'll refer to uh, throughout this album as well. Yeah, they listed a whole bunch of them and, you know, even some lyrically as well that I was very impressed with when we get into our 
some of our favorite songs. But yeah, that would probably definitely have to be my second favorite beat. I also like the beat from Habitat. I thought that was a really nice, unique beat too. That that contains a sample from the symphony by Marlon Wayans, Duval Clear, Craig Curry, Nathaniel Wilson, Antonio Hardy, Otis Redding, Alan Jones, and Al Bell, performed by Marley Mar Marl. Featuring Master Ace, Craig G, Cool G Rap, and Big Daddy Kane. So So yeah, yeah just this, Yeah, that 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 was a this, nice beat. <laughs> Yeah, this this album is not lacking in beats at all. It's it's pretty good, yeah. All right, all right. Let's get into singles. Let's start with Mathematics. I thought that was a really good song. It was the only um, single that didn't have a music video, but um, you know, I was definitely a math guy growing up. I was uh, I did a math related major during my uh, time in college, but. If I pull up the lyrics here for mathematics, I like how he starts it off. Yo, check it. One for Charlie Hustle, two for Steady Rock, three for the fourth coming line, Future Shock. It's five dimensions, six senses, seven pyramids to heaven to hell, eight million stories to tell, nine uh, planets faithful keep in orbit with the probable tenth. The universe expands. Length, you know, I thought that was pretty cool how he started it off, and then, um, when he gets to the chorus, you know, definitely the samples, the mighty most damp, uh, it's simple mathematics. Check it out, I revolve around science. What are we talking about here? Yeah, I love that. What are we talking about here? I love, love, love that sample, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the Erica Badu sample in the chorus, too. Do your math one, two, three, four. From James Brown, and then what are we talking about here? You know, what are we talking about here? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, Any thoughts on this song? I think, I think the Erica Badu sample is appropriately placed because I know she's very into numerology, and she's always talking about numbers and stuff like that in the song. And and the song he kind of just used uses numbers and statistic and you know numerical data to tell a story. He says, it's a numbers game, but shit don't add up somehow. And he talks about how he only gets 15% of his musical profits, even though he writes all 16 or 32 bars and $69 million national defense, but the people still live in fear. Um, I thought it was funny when he said, uh, well, funny and a little prophetic when he said, 40% of Americans own a cell phone so they can hear everything <laughs> you say when you ain't home. I guess Michael Jackson was right. You, you are, are not, not alone. alone. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I think if you're talking about the day, I, I'd have to say more, at least 85% of Americans own a cell phone. Now, I'm not including children in that. I, I think almost yeah. everyone and their mother has a cell phone. So it's, I think, I think you can't function today without a cell phone. It's like, if you leave the cell phone without, you know, from your home, if you leave your house without your cell phone, it's like you you feel like naked to an extent. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely a panic. It's, it's hard to imagine even, you know, 1999, what is that? 25 years ago yeah. that only for, it was, you know, less than half of people, had one because now it's yeah it's, it's pretty it's way much like it's way higher one. yeah you need one it's not it's not like it's not a luxury anymore if that makes sense yeah I think people might look back say like five hundred years from now we might be looked at as that the generation that just kind of went from you know we was just kind of raw dog in life back in the nineties to by the time two thousand ten comes everybody got something on them even if it's like palm pilot cell phone you know mm. computers laptop like it's it, you you can't even imagine life without it at this point yeah. even the you know two-year-olds three-year-olds they're like i need my tablet so yeah i mean i was about to say at minimum you 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 need you would at least need a flip phone at minimum <laughs> yeah and I mean, a lot of the boomers are staying there. Like my, my grandma has a flip phone. She, I keep telling her, get on, get on Twitter, text me. You know, she has no interest, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
But yeah, de definitely, it's a you know very great song. Just makes you think about you know reality and uh, numerology and all all the stuff that you know comes with it. So I thought it was a very well well played song for the most part. Yeah, yeah de definitely. Let's move on to uh, the next single. Umi says, "I'll let you start this one out. What do you got for this one?" I thought this was an interesting song because it it has kind of a, a purposefully unrefined sound. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd probably say he's he freestyled this song completely and just put it yeah, out. Yeah, I don't think there were like any like bars. He was just like singing, like yeah. straight up. And then the music video really just uh, depicts like what he was doing. Just like he wasn't spitting any like real like hip hop or well, like rap bar, excuse me. Um, just singing, singing it like freestyle, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of saying his uh, stream of consciousness, a stream of reflection. He, the first words he says is, "I don't, I don't want to write this down. I want to tell you how I feel right now. Tomorrow may never come for you or me. Life is not promise." And he even speaks directly to the listener. Which I, I felt a little goosebump when I heard this because I was like, ooh, maybe he's talking to me in 2024 when he says, I hope you feel me where I am mm -hmm. to wherever you are. I mean that sincerely because it's like it's like, it's like he almost knows like, you know, maybe people from far and wide, you know, maybe even in 2024 might uh, hear his music. So I like it. And when he says uh, it, when he says sometimes I get discouraged, things are so weak, people are so weak. Sometimes I just want to li live a quiet life. Um, but then he remembers his purpose is to shine his light on the world. So I thought it was a really good song, even though it was it was it was different in that it, it was just so un unrefined. What, what did you think of it? Yeah, I thought it was you know, a good song. Just uh, talking to the listener. I thought it was very good. I liked the, how he says, my only said shine your light on the world, shine your light for the world to see. Mob, he said, shine your light on the world, shine your light for the world to see. I want black people to be free, to be free, to be free. And, you know, he goes on there. Uh, sometimes I get discouraged. I look around and things are so weak. People are so weak. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like crying. Sometimes my heart gets heavy. Sometimes I just want to leave and fly away. Fly, fly, fly like a dove. Sometimes I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah, yeah he kind of just like went all over the place there. But, you know, I thought it was, you know, a pretty uplifting song. And I think the songs like this is what really, like, defines, like, the kind of, you know, artist that he is. And, you know, I think that's uh, very uh, important, you know, when it comes to something like that, you know. For sure. So, I mean, yeah, definitely a great song, definitely. All right. Uh, and then thoughts on the music video? Um, I liked how like he's in the studio, but it's just a whole bunch of most deaf is I mean not most deaf is <laughs> there's a whole bunch of most deafs throughout the studio at different oh, points yeah. in time. I thought that was Yeah, really I, I liked how they did like the whoever shot it did a really good job, especially for the time, you know, with it you know, just going around the whole studio. Um freestyling him on the guitar, him playing the drums, you know, him just doing all sorts of stuff. And then it goes to, like, images, like, around the world or, you know, videos. You know, you know just I thought that was pretty cool. So, yes. you know, very, very well music video. Now we go to possibly the best song on this album. Well, we're not there yet. Um, but definitely the one that I hear a lot. Uh, Miss Fat Booty. Most stuff. Um, you know, definitely Aretha Franklin, credit to her. I know I can't afford to stop for a moment that it's too soon to forget. You know, <laughs> um, the sample, very, very well played. Um, you know, definitely most stuff talking about, you know, just, uh, you know, girl came, came with the same type of uh, game, the type of girl given out the fake cell phone and name, you know, big fame. She liked cats with big things, jewels, chips, money clip, phone flip, which the six range, meaning not the phone flip anymore, but <laughs> 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 oh, I, don't, I don't think anyone judges anyone by their phone anymore, if, if you know what I mean. But back then it was, uh, 
Yeah, it, it was a big deal to me. I know for me, me personally, like when it comes to cell phones, I I didn't get my first cell phone until my senior year in high school. So, <laughs> and when this album came out, I was like maybe fresh eighth grade, ninth grade at the time. So, yeah, I didn't have a yeah. phone. <laughs> yeah, that that flip was was a status symbol because I mean, even when I did get my first phone, like everybody had bar phones, bar phones. And when those flips came out and your friend got a flip and you still had the bar, you're just looking at them like talking on the phone when they get done, slamming it closed, and it just it just looks yeah. so cool. Like, man, I, I want a flip phone. <laughs> yeah, they were they were cool. I mean, I had a few flip phones. It wasn't my first phone, but I had a, I had a few flip phones for a while. Then they you know they slowly went out of style before smartphones became a big deal you know for the most part but <laughs> yeah but you know but that, that definitely um you know it's you know toss about this uh girl you know just how you feeling oh i'm fine my name is most i'm sharice i heard so much about you it's uh nice to finally meet we both uh moved to the booth reserved for for crew especially and honey loved ended up sitting directly next to me so you know, that, that definitely, you know, pretty, pretty nice song about, you know, him trying to get with a girl, you know, just <laughs> everything like that. Uh, what'd you make of the song? Yeah, I, I really love the song, even beyond the beat. Um, hmm. I like the way that he just told the story about this relationship. He takes you from the moment the relationship began begins, and then he takes you through a series of scenes throughout the relationship, and then and then the moment it ended mm -hmm. and throughout it, he's kind of telling us what he's really thinking, but, but he might be saying something different. So it's, it's kind of funny because he's talking about how he's very smitten with her. She has all the right weaponry, but he's trying to keep it cool. And, and the first, um, he calls them scenes like, cause he shouts out scene two, scene three, but mm -hmm. in the first scene, he tries to keep it cool, but he can't manage. And she kind of curves him. And then in the second scene, he does keep it very cool. He even goes so far as to, he's about to walk out. And she's like, how are you going to leave before you dance with me? And uh, <laughs> he's, uh, so he comes far from the curve. And I, I really like, you know, just the way he's, he, he tells the story. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely a nice, nice good story. And. It's still played to this day. I think it's aged very well, you know, that, I mean, it's hard to believe that a song like that was made in the 1990s decade, though I know it's going into the 2000s, but it feels like, I listen to a song like that, sometimes it feels like a song that was made in like the mid 2000s, maybe even late 2000s, early 2010s, maybe sometimes, like, with just, just the feel. I mean, I don't know if you get that feel like when you listen to the song, but that's the feel I get sometimes, that it's not as old as... It really is. I, I did, and I, I kind of got that throughout this album. And for this song especially, I, I was honestly surprised that it didn't cross my radar till now because, mm -hmm. you know, this is 1999. I would have been nine. This is the most popular song on the album, and I just never have heard it. So yeah. I'm glad I did now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, likewise, likewise. I, uh, I wasn't expecting to, uh, to love a song called Miss Fat Booty this much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I wonder how you were gonna react to the title. I fi I figured <laughs> uh, it was both uh, Miss Fat Booty and and Mister N. I'm like, what the heck? And why aren't I felt like why aren't these like close to each other? They feel like these should be right next to each other on the checklist. But I was like, let me see what what Miss <laughs> Miss Fat Booty is about. And it, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, that def definitely a good song. And then, uh, what do you think of the music video for this one? So I think the only turn off for me, you know, the black and white, but otherwise I thought it was interesting. Well, it wasn't really that black and white. I think it was just like maybe, I don't know what to describe that color, but <laughs> it was a little bit of color, but not, I, not I was much. The first few times I listened to it, I didn't know yet that it was a single. So I was glad when I, when I saw that it, it had a video to it and it mm -hmm. was a single because I was like, um, I already had an image in my head of like what all it, what was gonna happen, and I wanted to see like how it how it matched up. It, yeah. it, it really didn't. It didn't. It didn't that much, of course. But I like to <laughs> you know co compare. But uh, one thing I noticed about the video was 
it, it was kind of like the the shorts that are that we have today where the mm. lyrics like or not the lyrics but the words pop up he had the words popping up in this graffiti yeah. font and i thought that was that was really cool yeah you don't really you didn't really see a whole lot of that back then like you do now so now it's like the norm like even if you don't want to see it it's like just shows up <laughs> like whether you're watching like a you're youtube short or something yeah right. yeah for, for <laughs> much, but yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, I thought the video, you know, it was pretty straightforward, pretty nice video. Just, you know, just def definitely him telling the story and acting out the story as well. Uh, kudos to the director, whoever that was. Don't know who directed the video. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, if, if I'm being honest. All right. So let's see. Um, so we did, talked about the three singles. Now, what are our three favorites? So as you can probably imagine, Miss Fat Booty is yeah. one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. The other two were Love and I knew Fear you'd love that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fear Not of Man and honorable mentions to New World Water and Rock and Roll. Well, what were yours? All right, for me, it was very, very tough. It was such a good album, but Miss Fat Booty was my favorite. Uh, the other two I got to go with were, um, Mathematics. I thought it was just a, you know, very well played numbers song. And then the other one I'm going to go with is Brooklyn. Um, the honorable mention to Habitat, Speed Law, and Fear Not of Man. I thought that was a pretty good song too. But I had a feeling you were going to like those song love. So what did you like about this one? <laughs> Um, I like how he kind of goes a little bit, uh, he, talk, he talks about his process of creating music as if it, as if it's something that like takes hold of him and traps him. He says, I start to think and then I sink into the paper like I was ink. When I'm writing, I'm trapped between the line. I escape when I finish. And then he tells his story growing up in uh, Roosevelt Projects, mm -hmm. which had a bright, a bright valley with dark prospects. And I like how he repeats the line two times. So I, I feel like he he, really, he was really doing this. He said, I listened to the rap attack and held the radio close. I listened to the rap attack and held the radio close. I was like, okay, <laughs> he was really doing that when he was a boy. And uh, I like when he wonders how to honor the, the existence of this, uh, the Roosevelt product projects. Mm -hmm. Should I visit this place and re remembrance or build landmarks here as evidence? So I, I thought it was a really cool song, a really re reflective song, and he talked about his writing process, which I, which I really love. Did, did you like it? Uh, it was a good song. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it, it it was you know good. Not not my favorite, but you know I definitely like the chorus where he's like, uh, "I got love, L O V E, and I be love, L O V E to M C, get love, L O V E and I B, L O V." I I thought that was pretty some pretty good wordplay and letter play there. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, just, uh, you know, good song. Didn't get too much out of it, but I mean, I've, I've been doing these episodes long enough with you to know where, not so much that I know what you will like, but I uh, just a feeling where, um, uh, pretty much I know where, what you do, what you will like. Um, let's see. And we lost Netta here for a minute. Let me go back to the main page all right so uh, as you can see we kind of lost netta here due to technical difficulties i can kind of tell that she was uh struggling you know there on the other end let me see if i can get her back let's see do, 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 do. netta we lost you Oh, I was typing you a message. Yes, you're back. Yeah, you were kind of struggling there. Uh, let me let me get you back. Sorry, my internet went out. I had to get on my hotspot. Yeah, I can kind of tell you're, you're struggling there a bit. All right. Um. Okay, so we're back. Uh. Yeah. I I, I was saying before you went out. Um. 
I've done I've been doing these episodes enough with you to know what kind of uh songs you like. I mean, I don't think I'm an expert, but I think I've gotten to the point where it's like I have a strong feeling she will like this song. But then, you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I am a, sometimes you do surprise me, but not not always, but I had a feeling that yeah, I think she'll like love. I think the one on here that I thought you were going to like yeah. too was uh Mr. N or Mr. Nigga, whatever you want to call it, but <laughs> I thought you were gonna like that it, one too, but because you know Q Tip and all, and yeah, it, it was it, it was pretty good. I di- I didn't think it it made the cut for top three, but I I liked it pretty good. All right, all right, and then so you did love Fear Not of Man. What'd you like about this song? I liked how he's kind of pontificating on the direction of hip hop. I really liked when he said people talk about hip hop like it's some giant living in the hillside mm-hmm. coming down to visit the townspeople. And he says hip hop is the people. If you want to know where hip hop is going, ask yourself where you're going and how you're doing. And he said uh, he talks about government surveillance. He seems to be really into that, but he maintains that he's not afraid of it. Mm-hmm. When he's told to fear it, he says, fear not of men because men must die, mind over matter and soul before flesh. Uh, so he, he goes on to say, gunmen and stockholders try mm-hmm. to bear it my fear, but God is sufficient over plans they prepared. So I, I really like that song. I thought it was all right song. Definitely. I liked uh, your previous pick, Love, over this one, if I'm being completely honest. But I do like the hip-hop metaphor that he brings in the song, like, where do you think hip hop is going? Um, you know, what's gonna happen with hip hop? You know, just asking questions. And you know, '90s. I don't think hip hop is accepted better now than it was back then. Back then, you know, you had your struggles with hip hop, whether you were on the gangster side of things or not. You know, <laughs> so I mean, I do like uh, the realities he does bring to the song, but in terms of like favorites, it, it just didn't do it for me. Um, yeah, I can I can see that a lot of it wasn't mm-hmm. even a song. Like probably yeah. the first at least fifty to sixty percent of the song was just yeah. him talking, but it might it might be more poetry. But I like yeah, it. I think yeah, that's I think it was more on a just poetry end, but kind of like made it memorable. That was uh, instrumental, so that I mean, if it was an instrumental yeah. album, it'd be a different story. But I did think it was a great beat. All right, and then for my pick, Brooklyn. Uh, I love the samples that were played here. Um, the beginning of the song just really stood out to me. Hey, hey, ha, ha, say what? Um, sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only friend in this city I live in is a beautiful Brooklyn. Long as I live here, I'm on fire. Hey, um, you could talk about the beats that were sampled, but these are actually lyrics that he sampled from an uh, act we covered recently, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Under the Bridge. If you ever check that song out, um, instead of the city, uh, the, the Brooklyn part was replaced, replaced with uh, the City of Angels. So it's, obviously, that's where they're from. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, he sampled that from them. So, you know, he definitely went all out, you know, the other genres as well to, you know, write the music, not only, you know, just production wise, but lyrically as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, how he talks about Brooklyn and I like the beat changes too. Um, if I can go, I'll give some credits or credits do Brooklyn. It contains a lot of samples. Uh, what are you doing for the rest of your life? Uh, performed by Milt Jackson. We live in Brooklyn, baby. Uh, performed uh, by Roy Ayers. And then, of course, the famous song, Who Shot Ya, uh, performed by the notorious B.I.G. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, definitely the all the beat changes there. So I thought it was pretty good. And, you know, just gave a great perspective on Brooklyn, uh, if you ask me. Um, did you have any thoughts on uh, Brooklyn? Yes, I I enjoyed the beat change as well. And uh, speaking of Biggie, I liked when he said they play big and get you open like a sandal bank. Um, Mm. I thought the song was it was really a a love letter to Brooklyn. I thought it was cool. And and he says, out of towners take the train 
um, plane and bus here must be something that they really want here. Travel all the world and great distances and ain't no a place that bears resemblance. Mm. Um, so I thought it was, it was, it, it was really cool. And people do, at least I do really have a, um, a different kind of view of, you know, the big, the big Apple lights yeah. and, uh, fashion and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's cool that he, he made a song, uh, for Brooklyn. Yeah, I know there are a lot of, you know, songs about Brooklyn out there, you know, from, BC Boys, I know that those are the only ones that come up to mind at the time. I think, yeah, you know, obviously Biggie too, but but yeah, I, I think this one definitely goes underrated. If you hadn't heard the song Brooklyn by Most Def, definitely check it out, especially if you're from Brooklyn. I think you'll love it. So, I mean, I had to go with uh, that as my third one. The rest of it was a great album, just very album like this, just very hard to choose sometimes. Uh, obviously, Miss Fat Booty, we both agreed on, you know, that was a single that obviously was the best song. So, you know, because sometimes you do get singles on some of these albums that we do that are just like, why are these singles? Or you think they're mediocre, but hey, there, there's stuff on this album that's a lot better. And you can count it to how many times you listen to it or whatnot. But I feel like with this, it, I think I think they got it right with this one. Um, what, what are your thoughts there? Um, I think so. Miss Fat Booty for sure. Let's see. Umi says for sure. Um, I know this was one of your favorites, but I would take mathematics out of there hmm. and and maybe put uh, I guess the Brooklyn song. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, that, that's that's even, a pair. That's I mean, even the hip hop song. Hip hop, you know, hip hop was a good song. Rock and roll was a good song. New World Water, you're one of your honorable mentions. I thought that was a good song. I mean, just just a lot, 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 lot of great tracks on here. All right. So when doing research for this album, I didn't find any album cuts or expansions. If you guys want to correct me in the comments or send us a message, feel free. I mean, I looked, I didn't see anything, and I didn't see any additional music videos. That's the two that we found, we talked about. Um, recommendations for this album. Um, uh, most stuff he did team up with uh Talib Kweli, fellow uh Brooklyn artist. Uh, most stuff and Talib Kweli are Black Star. Obviously, it's a um, collaboration project, it came out the year before this album, so definitely check that out if you want more. Uh, another recommendation that came up when doing research uh, The Roots Things Fall Apart. We haven't done a Roots album yet. Got to look for one of those. But, uh, yeah, definitely check out The Roots, Things Fall Apart. And then going back to Talib Kweli, uh, Quality. I know it came out several years later, but that would be his uh, debut album. So definitely check that out in terms of recommendations. And I'm sure there's a lot of other great stuff out there, too, that would fit the norm. So, you know, definitely do your research. If you, know, if you want to correct me on some of the recommendations, let me know. All right. Uh, final thing thoughts on the album um what are you taking back to your playlist you know giving it another listen staying on your out rotation <laughs> i'm i'm definitely taking back miss fat booty and i I also take back fear fear not a man really enjoyed mm -hmm. that in, in, in closing i'd say that i think i think most def is a really or yasin b um is a really talented mu musician this album expressed his devotion to God, which mm. I really like, because I'm I'm kind of uh, a religious, uh, religiously homeless. I say I'm religiously in, fl in flux. <laughs> so I like to hear people, you know, talk about God or or lack thereof, whatever. So I yeah. like his, him talking about spirituality. He I liked when he talked about his devotion to the black community, um, his devotion to hip hop in general, and more than that, I even liked how he he lays bare his. Uh, in inner struggles, his questions, and he, he takes some hard stances. And I really recommend it to anybody who wants to listen to an artist, like a principled artist mm -hmm. who, who has something to say. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely one of the ones who was everything going on with hip hop that was probably right at the time, you know, that definitely not, not too hard of an image, you know, easy to listen to, easy to dip into any of his projects. Uh, for me, definitely taking, well, Miss Fat Booty, I'm probably not taking that back because I've heard it a million times, so that that's probably not going back to the playlist. I'm just, it's the best song, but I'm not going to be listening yeah. to it again like that. Uh, 
Mathematics, definitely. Brooklyn. Uh, definitely want to give Habitat a couple more listens. New World Water. And uh, probably a song you like, Love. I'll definitely give that another go as well in terms of songs I'm taking back. All right, guys. So you heard our picks. Uh, what do you like about this album? What are your favorite tracks? Let us know in the comments or in any of the shorts comments that, that may come across. Uh, for Netta, a.k.a. Wondrous Net, I'm Justin Too Tall for You Fools, saying thank you for watching, thank you for listening. Our apologies for the technical difficulties, and we will see you on the next one. Later.